Thank you so much for tuning in and to worship with us today on 100.5 Sunday Morning Glory. We're so glad that you decided to join us today at the Fort Concho Mission Church. We want to build you up. We want to encourage you. We want you to be lifted up. We want you to be strengthened by the Word of God. We know every time that you tune in and every time that you may watch on Facebook or on YouTube, some of us may need something, may need that encouragement. Well, I want you to know that God's Word is full of encouragement and He's there for you. He's not against you. He wants to strengthen you. He wants to uplift you in all ways. We simply just have to give Him the opportunity and open the door of our heart. So let us begin by going to the Lord in a word of prayer. Let's ask Him to be with us at this time when we get into the service, when we get into the Word, and we open up God's Word that we can be encouraged but also strengthened for all that we go through each and every day. So let's go to Jesus right now. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray today, you open the spiritual eyes ears and hearts to be receptive to your word, that we can be encouraged in every way, strengthened to know that your word is for us. Dear God, help this word speak to us in many ways, that we can apply it and use it in our everyday life. That way we can encourage others and lift others up for the cause of Christ. Dear God, we thank you for what you're doing but most of all, we thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus' sweet, blessed name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Well, I was going through and uh, I read this and I, I want to share it with you today. L let me read this to you. Many people, after the services, line up Sunday mornings and get a CD of the message. When... The minister speaks on Sunday morning. The messages are taped and immediately made for purchase once the service is over. People each week lining to get up a, get a CD. What they get is a copy of the master. There is a master CD that holds the original recording. And then there are copies that are made available to people who want to listen to the sermon again or share it with someone else. All that people can do are purchase the replicas. The replicas of the master sound like the master, look like the master, and feel like the master, but they are not the master. However, they are so much like the master it's as good as having the master itself. Jesus is the master. But what he wants to do is copy himself unto his followers. So that when people see you or me, they are getting a recording of the master. As we are committed to following our master, who has all authority, this is the essence of discipleship. Getting closer to Jesus, getting closer to God each and every day through his word, reading his word, being with brothers and sisters in Christ, that discipleship strengthens us constantly. As we get into that word, disciple, my brothers and sisters in Christ, Sunday school teachers, leaders, but I tell you, if they're not around and especially with this COVID going on, some of us may not be going to church. Getting into God's Word, getting exposed to programs like this, watching, learning, your discipleship training is moving forward each and every step of the way. I want to encourage you, don't get weary in doing good. Don't get weary in getting into the Scripture. Don't get weary in taking that time out to pray to God. He wants to have that relationship, but through the Holy Spirit, He will nurture you and move you forward in everything that you do. So many times we get so distracted with everyday life and the everyday worry and struggles and wondering 
And what's going to happen? We have so many things, but you know, you simply can go to God's word and be encouraged. First Peter chapter five, verse seven, give all your worries to him because he cares about you. John chapter 14, verse one, Jesus says, don't let your heart be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. Jesus is so sweet. The Lord is so good. If we take a moment and get into that scripture and look for a topic and see what it says, it could speak to your heart. And you know what? I guarantee it'll speak to your heart to exactly what's going on in that evening, in that day, in that moment, what's going on with you. He, could st he talks to you in a supernatural way. You have to simply just open the book and start going through it. And he speaks. I want to encourage you today. I want to lift you up and let you know that through this book and through this word that we go through as ministers to present this word and prepare these sermons and get them together. Not only to encourage you, but to strengthen you to know that you are not alone and that God is with you every step of the way. And he is there to lead you and give you direction in your life. You see, when he gives you direction, then you experience peace. Colossians 3 and 15. Let the peace that Christ gives control of your thinking. Because you were all called to gather, gathered together in one body to have peace. Always to be thankful. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, You, Lord, Give true peace to those who depend on you because they trust on you. We trust you today, Jesus. We're asking you to lead us. We're asking you to guide us. And it's a peace that you give beyond all understanding. There may be somebody that's tuning in today and they're just going through the channels, looking through, looking for something, looking for encouragement, looking for hope. I want to encourage you. God's word is for you. The scripture says that his word never goes void. Wherever it's preached, wherever it's given, it's given to somebody and it doesn't fall on deaf ears. It reaches your heart. It gets to you. It talks to you like never before. God's word is so amazing how it can just seep inside the heart, seep inside the soul. You know, for myself, me personally, I remember being in youth group, starting to go to church. I wasn't one to grow up in church, but I had some good friends that invited me to go, go to their church. And I remember the sermon was the last thing I was interested in. I was interested in so many other things and my mind was going in so many different directions. Thinking about so many other things. I was distracted, playing, joking, talking with others. You would think I wasn't paying attention. But that minister was giving that word. He was preaching that word and it began to seep in. Even though I wasn't giving my undivided attention, those words of the scripture, those words of encouragement, those words of wisdom were seeping into my ear. And I couldn't help but hear them. Even though that evening, I may not have acted like I was listening. I may not have seen that I was paying attention. But I want you to know, when I got home that evening, being a teenager, laying down in my bed, looking at the ceiling, it began to happen. That word started to seep to my heart. That word started to touch my soul. That word started to grab root inside of me and talk to me in a mighty way. And eventually, as the days went on, I was excited to go back because that word was echoing in my mind. And I was looking for something. I was needing something because at that time, I was lost. 
I didn't have Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But that word, as promised in the scripture, does not go void. So I began to seek it and look for it. And all of a sudden, before I knew it, I was beginning to hunger for it. And it started to change my heart and started to change who I was. And I was ready for it. The crazy thing is, I went back. I visited over there. And there wasn't an opportunity to get saved. There wasn't an altar call. That didn't happen. It just ended. The service ended and I was so ready to accept Jesus. And it didn't happen. It was Something just out of this world. I was like, what? So I had to go back another time. Another Sunday. And finally they gave the opportunity. Finally they gave the chance of the altar call. To accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. I accepted Jesus that day. I asked him to come into my heart like never before. Forgive me of my sins. I've been walking with Christ. And it's been a fulfillment like never before. But I want you to understand, some days you won't feel like it. Some days you won't feel like listening to a sermon. Some days it just, uh, it just doesn't seem to be right in your flesh. But I want to encourage you, keep the radio on. Keep the television on. Keep the streaming program on. Let it go on, even in the background. I guarantee that it'll seep in. I guarantee that it'll start working in your life. And then it'll start touching your life. It'll start touching your soul. It'll start touching your heart. It'll start to change you. And then it'll start to give you a direction. Today, the message today is our pleas for direction. Our title verse is from Psalms 25, 4 and 5. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth. That is the foundation, first of all, when we get to get to with where we need to be with God, as we sit down, as we pick up our Bible, Lord, lead me, Lord, guide me, Lord, speak to me, Lord, talk to me, use this living and breathing book to show me something. That should be the beginning. As soon as we sit down, the Holy Spirit, God, your teacher, show me, lead me. And guide me. Number one, show me. Show me. Psalms 25 and 4 says, Show me thy ways, Lord. You see, today's society offers a variety of options to choose from the way of self seeking, the way of sinful pursuits, the way of possibly even Satan worship, and then there's God's way. This morning, I want to encourage you, give God the opportunity and the chance to lead you and guide you in his way. Give him the opportunity through avenues and areas such as this, such as going to your Bible, such as getting into the word, such as reading and seeing programs like this. Taking time out to say, I'm going to go to church, or I'm going to listen to church. I'm going to get involved. Encourage yourself. When David, when everything was going against him and nobody was for him, the scripture says that he encouraged himself. Sometimes we even have to do that. We have to encourage ourselves to get up in the morning or to get ready for church. I know that the flesh is weak, the scripture tells us. But we have to move forward and say, I am going to get into God's word today. I am going to read a passage of scripture today. I am going to encourage somebody with God's word today. I'm going to be a blessing to somebody today in Jesus' name. That's what we do. The psalmist prayed that God would show him the ways. God's ways are always right and they're always best. We, in our minds, should focus on trusting in Him and choosing His way every step in our life. You see, God's Word guides us. We also find God's way through prayer, meditation, 
and trusting God for direction by taking that simple time out in the morning, in the afternoon, on that car ride, getting the kids dropped off. And once they're dropped off, taking that moment saying, Lord, lead me and guide me today. Giving him that issue that you may be experiencing right there and then saying, Lord, I need your wisdom. I need your guidance. I need you to help me and strengthen me with my very next decision. I tell the congregation, our God is a God of every day, every hour, every minute, and every second. And the reason being is because every moment, every minute, every second, we all have choices and decisions to make. And through those choices and decisions, we're praying that God helps us make the right choices and decisions. Because not only for the benefit of us, but for our family and for those that are watching us. We may have our children, our family members. We may be teachers. And people see us. Remember that the greatest sermons ever preached aren't by words, but by actions. By asking God to give us wisdom on what to say and how to act in that very next second and moment. Because it means so much and it speaks to people in so many ways. So be sure to make your time out in meditation, in prayer, in talking with him and leading and guiding you for direction. The scripture admonishes us in all ways. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct our paths. That's from Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6. In all of our ways, let's make it a habit to acknowledge Jesus in everything. And ask him to lead us and guide us in everything so he can direct our paths. Number two point for this sermon is teach me. Teach me. Psalms 25 and 4 says, teach me thy path. Teach me. You see, some Christians lack God's direction because they are set in their own ways. If we are to receive God's guidance, we must be teachable and willing to learn. I want you to know, for myself, I always tell my wife and I tell my students and people in Sunday school and the youth, I try to tell them, have a teachable spirit. And for myself, I encourage myself to have a teachable spirit. I can be 80 years old. I could be 100 years old. And I still have much to learn. God's ways are infinite. And plus, that book is alive and it speaks, and it talks. Understand that we must have a teachable spirit. God speaks and he talks through people also. And sometimes he uses people to bestow wisdom on you or encouragement. Sometimes their life experiences are going through things that you may be going through at the same time. Keep a teachable spirit in humility. Have a humbled spirit. Say, okay. And even if you've heard it before, take it in. Take it in. Be grateful. Be thankful. Because that person, they're giving their will. They're giving their strength. And they're trying their best to encourage you and to lift you up. Just by being an acknowledgeable person to what they're trying to do can speak to them or minister their soul and minister to them in many mighty ways. So be loving, show care, show compassion. We must learn about God's path by studying and learning from the word. Science, psychology, and psychology cannot take place of believing and preaching, preaching the living Bible. They cannot take place at all unless the living Bible is present because all of those things somehow are all wrapped around the Word of God. Everything that we have, our constitution, our laws, our morals, our values, all of those things have some sort of tiny root in the Word of God. He leads us, He guides us, 
It even helps us in this word to be civilized, to show care, to show compassion. All these things take place by the word of God. Jesus said the Holy Spirit shall teach you in all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. This was John chapter 14, 26. The Holy Spirit, once he's allowed to be inside of us, once we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he begins to teach us and show us and guide us through that small, still voice. It gives you a spirit of agreeance. When you read something and you're just like nodding, uh-huh, yes, that's right, that's good. The Holy Spirit is giving you that spirit of agreeance. And then sometimes when you hear something, you're like, oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't feel comfortable. Oh, uh, my spirit is quenched by that. The Holy Spirit is talking and leading you and guiding you away from that. Or he's talking and leading you to wait, to hold off and see what he's going to do. See what the word, how it lines up. Is this good for me? Is it good for my health? Is it good for my family? Is it good for my marriage? Is it good for my job? Or are all these things going to hurt and lead me astray or tear me apart from that or ruin my testimony or bring me down in a way that is not encouraging or positive to my Christian testimony? These are things to take into account. The third thing I want to leave you with in this point is lead me, lead me, lead me in thy truth. Psalms 25 verse 5. There is a great need for the truth in the world today, which is filled, unfortunately, with false religions and doctrines. David prayed for God to lead him in his truth. There are many things, but I want you to be understanding of this. The simple doctrine of the good news that Jesus came. He was on the cross. He conquered the grave. He paid it all for you, past, present, and future. The perfect sacrifice. He did it just for you. That way, your sins can be cleansed. All sins to be complete within Jesus. And for you to accept him and invite you in to be your Lord and Savior. That simple doctrine. Keep it simple. Keep it easy. Keep it right. When you have that foundation, then you could be strengthened with the rest of the word. The gospel. And all of these things in this scripture will help you, lead you, and guide you with your choices every single day, but hang on to the firm foundation of the simple truth of the good news of the gospel of what Jesus has done for you. That will keep you straight, and that will keep you forward, and that will keep you rooted. When all these other doctrines come your way, even these false religions, understand that Jesus paid it all. If we are to be led by the Lord, we must live in his presence. He promised never to leave or forsake his own. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He is with you every step of the way. The biggest lie that Satan loves to give you is that you're all alone. He loves to tell the shut-ins that. The people in the nursing home. The people in the hospitals today. You're all alone. There's nobody with you. That is the biggest lie. You're not alone. Jesus is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you. He is always with you. He is a friend like no other. I want to encourage you today to let you know that you are not alone. And I want you to know that there are brothers and sisters in Christ in this ministry today that are praying for you, that are lifting you up. When we pray, we lift up the unbeliever. 
When we pray, we lift up the person that may be tuning in. The person that's looking for something. The person that needs something in their life. We're lifting you up today. You can simply, you can call, you can write in to Harris Avenue Baptist Church in Angelo, Texas. You can Google us, send us a letter in care to look for the Fort Concho mission. Say, I want this to go to Fort Concho to Pastor Daniel Ortiz. I will read your letter. I will respond to your letter or the phone call or however you contact us through Facebook However you uh, social media, I want to return your message and let you know that we're praying for you. We want to lift you up. We want to encourage you every step of the way. Jesus promised that the Holy Spirit would abide in us forever. He dwells within the totally committed Christian. He shows us his way. He teaches us and he leads us. John 14, 6 and 17, the Holy Spirit leads us into the truth. When the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all of his truth. John 16 and 13. He'll guide you every step of the way in his truth, in his word. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be lifted up and I want you to know that the Lord is for you in all areas. Don't get weary in doing good. Understand, we need to be led. We need his guidance. And his word is the perfect instruction manual for each and every one of us. Open that word. Get into the gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's your beginning. That's your start. Start there. And like Peter says, stir up the word each and every day. Stir it up. Stir it up so you won't forget it. So you'll be instant, in and out of season, ready to tell the goodness of what you've learned and the goodness of what you've experienced in Jesus. If you haven't experienced that, if you want that, this is your opportunity right now. I'm going to ask you, listener, bow your head. Let's talk to Jesus right now. Dear Jesus, we understand what you did on the cross. We understand what you did for me. Dear Lord, I ask you to come into my life, come into my heart. I want to ask you to be my Lord and Savior. I understand that you conquered the grave, you arose again, and your blood was shed for all of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, if you said that simple prayer, I believe that you've been born again. I would love to know about it. Contact us on social media. Write us a letter. Give us a word of encouragement. Tell us what you've done. We would love to hear, hear from you. If you'd like to worship with us, if you'd like to join us Sunday morning, you're welcome to join us at the Fort Concho Mission, 500 East Avenue D, San Angelo, Texas. We'd love to have you worship with us and be a part of our ministry. With that being said, God bless you, and we pray that you have a wonderful week. Thank you for getting into the Word with us today. God bless you.